Mr. Roch. And I'm Mrs. Flynn, and we're back with the modeling task. Right, part two. If you remember, we were working on modeling tasks for world oil production, a task that we made up to be similar to your IB Type 2 portfolio. And on the first one we had gotten so far is we graphed the data, and we found two different models. Uh, that fit the data, that yeah. Fit, that fit the data. And so we are now at the part where we're going to use now technology to develop a model of the data. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to just take my data, I'm going to copy it, and I have Logger Pro open, which is just one of several programs you could use. And I'm going to paste my data in. And you can see it's kind of going over there a little bit. And here, if I hit A, I can see it nicer for it. Now, um, so here is our data set. If we want to try and get a model for it, if I click on this fancy button here, I have all these choices to choose from. Now, when we look at it, it may be a cubic. And I can hit Try Fit. And when I see those calculations, I can have that. It looks fairly nice. Yeah. Okay. Or I could also do something further down. We thought it may be a sine function. Well, sometimes my fu sine function works, sometimes it doesn't. Let's actually do a cosine function. Let's say A uh, times. times cosine B times parenthesis X, oh, X minus C and parenthesis plus B. And we'll call it cosine. And so I can define my function, and then I'm going to try fit with that one. We'll see if it, it works. Sometimes uh, mm. Something's going on, I think, with ratings and degrees. So you might have to play around with changing what that, what that says, but there is a scenario you might want to try as well. I'm not going to fight through it at this point because I'm not a professional on Logger Pro, but that would be my guess, the rating degree kind of issue. Or you could even try just playing around with these numbers too. I do like the cubic one I used. And so at this point, I would take this model, all these variables are here in the screen, and I would put it into my Excel program, and I would find my model. I would do the Excel stuff where I would look at the differences, consider the absolute value, perhaps percent error, scenarios like that to mathematically determine was my technology model better, was my cosine model better, or my cubic model better, and have some kind of rationale. Uh, about why that would be so. And so that would have been use technology to develop a model. I would graph this with the original model, compare the two models. Well, I can do that and then decide which is better. Justify your decision by using those tables. I, that's what I would do. All right. All right. So if we look at the rubric, which we haven't done yet, if we look at this rubric, most of the stuff we've been talking about is criteria C. We've gone through and we've defined our variables, constraints, and attempted to create a mathematical model. We've done more than that. We have analyzed the variables. We have a task to enable the formulation of mathematical, mathematical model that is relevant to the task and consistent with the level of the course. Well, we study trigonom trigonometric functions. We study polynomials, so that's, that's good. Things that they don't want, they don't want lines. That's not consistent with the level of the course. Consu student considers how well the model fits the data. Well, that's doing the math, showing those tables to justify why your model or yeah, which so model is the looking best. Looking at the differences and the percent error. Right. Um, and then five, we haven't done C5 yet, which is the student applies the model to other situations. Well, but, back on the task sheet, they right. gave us another situation. Ah, nice. So then they come along and they give us all this data. Here's our new situation. So we go and add that data onto this. We can see if the model still fits. Right, how well does the model still fit? Well, I'm gonna let you guys play around with that. Uh, I played with it a little bit, and I can just tell you that the data starts to go up this way. It goes higher and higher and higher. It's a increasing. And so you'll talk about how well does your model fit the new data? Well, it won't fit it very well because it's increasing, and yet all our models were decreasing change a model to account for this new data, well then you go and use your technology or your regression tools or you can use your um, best yet, actually is do simultaneous equations again. 
or do new transformations with your sine and cosine. And comment on how well the new model fits the data. So you basically have to do all the this whole process all, all this over process again. Yeah, over again for that model. And then finally, discuss any limitations to your model and implications. This is in the D criterion. Let's look at our criterion. It talks about in D. So we would have gotten a C5 because we would have modeled the other stuff. Okay. Okay. We didn't, but we would have. Um, we have arrived at some results. The student has interpreted the reasonableness of the results of the model in the context of the task. So now, C part is all about crunching numbers in a model. It doesn't matter what the numbers are about. D part is now making sense of those numbers in context of what we're talking about. So everything's got to be with result with about world oil production. Um, and so we're going to attempt to interpret the reasonableness of the result of the model in the context of the, the task, or has correctly interpreted the reasonableness of the result of the model in the context of the task, the appropriate degree of accuracy. So the things that, that I would be looking for in the, in the DU criteria, I would be looking for things of interpolation, extrapolation. So how well does interpolation is how well does the data fit inside so that you could predict or estimate values inside. So how well does your model fit the actual curve and could you use it? I would think it'd be pretty good. There's one outlier here that I would think you'd have to talk about in D. But then the extrapolation is outside the range of data. And we ought to make sure we don't just think about what happens on in the future, but we should also talk about what happens on the past. That would be a part I think a lot of people forget about. It says that world oil production was going higher and higher and higher if I look at my model here, which does that make sense? <laughs> doesn't really make a lot, a, a lot of sense. So there'd be a good conversation there. Also, if you look at your model, your model is going to continue. If you choose the cubic, it's going to continue to go down and down and down and down and down and down and down. Eventually, it's going to be zero and then negative, which doesn't really make a lot of sense right now either. I think eventually it might as world oil production decreases because of lack of oil. But I think there's a whole conversation to happen about when this would be reasonable to happen, and it's not going to happen any time in the next 10 years. Um, so those are some of the limitations that you'd be thinking about in the D criterion. Good words to use are extrapolation, extrapol or in interpolation. I want to see what's going on in the future. Maybe there are asymptotes involved. Maybe there are um, limiting values of scenarios where if you have a population of deer in the woods, you can't have the deer can't keep growing forever and ever and ever in the woods. There's got to be some kind of limiting, limiting value because there's only enough food. Some things like those kind of scenarios, you've got to think about and interpret what you've done in the model in terms of what it means to the real world application. If we look at criteria E, from my, our perspective, I would have gotten a two. All that technology we used, making those tables all enhanced my development of the task doing the screenshots of the development of the sine function or the cosine function, again, would have been a good enhancement. Um, I haven't thought long and hard about what would significantly enhance it. Significantly enhance it is very hard to do. Very, very hard to do. It's typically got to be something that... Is unique and... Yeah, and creative. And, yeah. and so I always find this one really hard for myself to even do. Um, and then F, well, that's F criteria. So okay. when you put this all together, it's got to be nice and coherent, concise. It's better, sometimes better to be shorter as opposed to lo the longer. Um, but you have to balance good explanations and arguments with communication. Anything else we need to talk about there, there Ms. Flynn? I think they should have a good start now. All right. Good luck, and uh, we look forward to seeing your portfolios.